Hi Nan, it's James. Um, so this will be my video regarding the heuristic evaluation that I've done on the Steps to Wellbeing website. Um, I wish we were doing this in person, perhaps it would be a little bit easier, but needs must at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the process that I went through to conduct my evaluation and then to go through my recommendations with you on Envision. Okay, so I'll talk through the process from uh, the initial evaluation to um, conducting the usability study and coming up with the usability issues and then I'll be providing you with some recommendations as well. So first of all, um, a little bit of background about the Steps to Wellbeing website. So as I'm sure you know, uh, so the Steps to Wellbeing website is a free NHS website and it offers help and advice to those who are suffering with or caring for a wide range of mental illnesses. So whether that is from someone who has got anxiety to depression to post-traumatic stress disorder, there's a whole range. And what the website does, it's essentially a source of information. Okay, so it's got a wealth of information. Um, it also has details about referrals um, and also seeking help required by an individual. So whether that's referring to see a counsellor, a psychologist, all of that can be done through this website. So it's really a one-stop shop for anyone who is unfortunately suffering with a mental health illness, which so many people are. Now, in terms of the evaluation process, now there are a number of different ways that you can assess usability on a web application, whether that is a cognitive walkthrough or whether that is something like a heuristic evaluation. Now, the thing that is most important when you are evaluating a website is that you evaluate it from the point of view of the user. So someone who is going to be using this website in their hour of need, if they are having issues and they need to access the right information. So um, what I have opted to do, as you can see on the screen, is I've opted to go for the heuristic evaluation and I've done my evaluation based on the Jacob Nielsen 10 heuristics. Now, the main benefit of doing a heuristic evaluation is that, first of all, it can be produced in a timely manner. It's very cheap to run and there are no special requirements in terms of equipment. So I was able to do everything on my laptop and look at things on my phone as well. And given the current pandemic that we are unfortunately going through at the moment, uh, the heuristic evaluation certainly is favourable with the government's social distancing guidelines. Um, what I will say is one of the main drawbacks of doing a heuristic evaluation is that a single evaluator will find significantly less usability issues than what multiple assessors would find. Um, that said, um, it was me who solely carried out this heuristic evaluation and it was all done on my own personal laptop. So let me talk you through the process then. So what I did to begin with is I essentially, I spent two or three days looking at the Steps to, Be Steps to Wellbeing website, clicking through, basically acting as if I was a user, clicking on the different boxes, using the search bar, scrolling through, reading the information. Um, Whilst doing this, I think it was very important to not only look at the website once, but look at the website three, four, five times with a fresh set of eyes, go back over the issues that I've already found and see which ones really are the main issues for a user doing what they need to do on this website. Now, I think when I first did this, I had a massive long list of usability issues. On reflection, a lot of those issues were all very similar. So what you see here is a very condensed version of the usability issues that I found. So we've got 15 issues here in total, ranging from the search bar um, functionality. It's very difficult when using um, spelling mistakes phrases to the, the length of the home page, to the inconsistent page lay layout, etc., etc. OK, now what I'm going to do is we are a bit limited with the time, so I'm just going to go through the three main usability issues that I've found and I'll discuss them with you in a little bit more detail. Okay, so the first one um, would be that the search bar 
essentially the functionality of that search bar is not very helpful for the user. If you search something like how to cope with anxiety, or if you made a simple spelling mistake, that would then result in the search bar bringing up no results at all. You'd be brought up with a blank page, essentially. Now, the reason why I deem this to be such a big issue, there's two reasons really, is if, if I put myself in the shoes of someone who is suffering with a mental illness, I know that I would want to get information and I want to get information quickly. Having a search tool like that isn't conducive to finding information quickly. And yes, you can click through and find that, but it would certainly be a lot quicker to do that via the search tool. Moreover, I think I read a quote that uh, users spend 90% of their time not on your website. A lot of our time is spent on Google and other search engines. They, we come to expect a search fun functionality on any sort of website to match that other search engine, whether that is providing us with different recommendations, providing us with did you mean X, Y, Z, and also being able to understand when we're asking for sentences. Now, I think the way that this issue can be resolved I think it probably would take a lot of work from a technical perspective, but essentially having their search function to match that of a search engine. Now, the second issue that I found um, was actually the self-referral call to action. Now, first of all, it's not prominent within the site. It is actually at the bottom of the majority of the pages. Now, the goal of this website is to help people who have got a mental illness. One of the ways that people can be helped with this is be is by being referred to a health professional who can actually sit down with them and have a consultation. Now, not having that referral easy to locate then makes it difficult with the end you, the, the goal of this website to help as many people as possible. Now, the solution I believe to this would be to have a sticky call to action tab, which essentially would follow you down the page. You see this on a lot of websites that as you scroll down, the little icon follows you down the screen as well. If you click on that icon, it could then take you to the contact us page. And within the contact us page, you could have the self referral tab right at the top. So it's very easy. You click on that and you're straight through onto the external self referral tool. Now, the next issue um, that I found, one that I think is quite prominent, to be honest. Now, the layout between the home page, as you can see, it's very colorful, very image heavy, to one of the sub pages, it's very inconsistent. Now, when you click off the home page onto one of these sub pages, it's as if you've just gone off the website completely and you're actually looking at a Word document and to some people it might seem that the, the page actually hasn't loaded correctly. Now I believe a solution for this is essentially going to be a redesign of these sub pages so there is a consistent design throughout all of the website. Now the content itself is good but I think that could be displayed in a more concise manner. It's very text heavy, it could be broken up with maybe some videos, maybe some pictures as seen on some of the other tabs. Now what I wanted to do is go through my um, Envision prototype with you. I know we are a bit pressed for time here. So if you can see that okay from where you are. Right, so I'll briefly talk you through this, okay? Now, with the search bar, now obviously the functionality of the search bar isn't great where you have to do exact words or exact pages from the website for it to work correctly. Also, the size of it was quite easy to miss. It was only small and it was dwarfed really by the big logos on the site. So what I have done or what I would suggest is that this search bar is extended and also if you were to click on the search function and let's say you spell anxiety wrong, which is pretty easy to do. It would take you to a search page rather than saying no results, it would have did you mean anxiety, for example, and then you could click on this and it would then take you through to the anxiety page. Now, unfortunately, some of the usability issues that I've gone through, not all of them are that easy to show you um, on Envision, but I can talk you through briefly the ones that I have done so far. 
one issue that we had here is that on the website, the Steps to Wellbeing logo is very, very close. In fact, it was even overlapping the accessibility tab up here. So a very simple fix this one, just to straighten up the Steps to Wellbeing um, logo. Another issue that I found is the um, emergency support tab. Now, this was very big, very bold, very in your face, suggesting that it was sort of an emergency exit sign. And I think the way that it was structured, it could put some users off. So what I've opted for is to change the language and also go for more pastel calming tones. So if I... and evidence of the, the call to action here. So as you can see, this is just a prototype, obviously. So something like the, um, the telephone following you down the page as you scroll to ensure that if you're thinking, okay, yes, I do need serious help, you are always able to click on that wherever you go. Now, I don't wanna go through all of this because this is gonna be included as a part of my assignment. and I am conscious of time. Um, normally, I would ask if there are any questions, but unfortunately in this scenario, we're not able to do that. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the presentation um, and hopefully see you soon. Thank you.